What's up, everyone? Fresh off a Tuesday five-game slate. I'm Adam Drake from Rotowire. Rotowire.com slash soccer trial. I'm just going to be going over. We're going to get lineup release for two games coming up from the Premier League. We got Brentford home against Brighton. Arsenal home against Luton Town. I'm going to be going over those lineups once they are released. Uh, and yeah, talking about a few different things. Um, on the left hand of the screen, assume you're watching on YouTube or Twitter, uh, we got our Premier League Twitter list up and just all the Premier League teams. If you want to follow this yourself, just go over to just go over to Twitter, go to our list, and you can find it in there. But that's what I'm going to be using on the left hand side. Right hand side, we got our cheat sheet up. Um, so yeah, just shouts to shouts to the subscribers. We got a few more subscribers, so I want to do a, a live show here for everyone as we're getting some lineups. Also, want to talk about a couple of things from yesterday. Yesterday, we had uh, we had some lineup changes, you know, midweek matches. We got some formation changes, some weird things happening, and just just uh, just the benefit, I guess, uh, of being a subscriber to RotoWire, jumping in our Discord. I know I know a lot of people that that watch on YouTube or even listen to the podcast. They aren't they maybe aren't subscribers to RotoWire or don't jump in the Discord. Um, but one thing that kind of stood out was so. Even in cash games, but the, the uh, KOTP, King of the Pitch, I think it was the $5. Yeah, it was a $5. Uh, we had Anthony Robertson, Robinson at uh, 31%, I believe it was. And then and then Ryan Aitnery, who was playing an attacking position, at uh, 21%. And this is just something that kind of the – I mean, you could also follow Opta, because I, I believe Opta was correct in the formation. But just something – you can kind of get an edge where, whereas, you know, if you're just you're following usually usual positions, if you just assume that, um, uh, if you assume that Ryan Aiden Reed is in his regular position, but because of the injuries here, I just want to pull up the Wolverhampton lineup that really they released yesterday. So I think they ended up going with whatever Opta listed it as like a four, four, one, one, something like that. Um, it was something in that range. Um, but as you can see in this, so the projection was basically a 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1, where Ryan Aitnery was playing in attacking position. And we could see from this graphic, um, and, and Opta got this correct. Opta, I'll give a shot to Opta, because Opta isn't always you know correct with, with how their formations go. But so we have, we look at this graphic, Samedo as a right wing back, Hugo Bueno as a left wing back, and then Tarabia, Aitnery, Chiwomi up in the three attacking positions. And when you look at that, when you consider Anthony Robinson, I think the prices were 5,500, 5,100. Uh, just the fact that so many people played Anthony Robinson when Ryan Aitnery as an attacking player was cheaper uh, with basically the same floor and with more upside was less popular. Just uh, an incorrect play by the majority of the field. Um, and that's just something that, that an edge you can get. I mean, I guess also by looking at formations yourself, but also uh, rotowire.com slash soccer trial, rotowire.com slash chat to get into our discord. That's just one of the edges you can get into our discord. Cause that was, we had a, a small conversation about Ryan eight and re and I think everyone came to the conclusion in the discord that we were just locking in re in. It was, just a $5,100 listed as a defender playing an attacking role and a decent chance for 90 minutes because the Wolverhampton bench was so thin. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, you're not going to get every game because maybe you're not even going to be correct. I know, you know, as we're getting Luton Town here, I think it was, you know, Maybe a few weeks ago where we thought Issa Kabore was on the wing and something else was going off Luton Town, but it ended up being Issa Kabore was playing center back and, and just weird things like that. We didn't know Jefferson Lerma was playing center back for Crystal Palace yesterday. We didn't know Lewis Cook was going to be playing center back either. Some things will get wrong. Uh, some things uh, will will get really right because it turned out a Ryan eight three point floor and also got that goal, which was kind of the difference Difference maker, and you needed him as your defender. But now that we get to the uh, Wednesday slates here, so we got this two gamer, and then we got the Manchester City Aston Villa showdown later. So I don't really have much to say on this Arsenal match. Uh, if you want a couple bets, we did give some bets on kits and wagers. Check that out. That's up on our YouTube. It's up in the podcast feed as well. 
Uh, but we do have a couple bets for the Manchester City Aston Villa match. You can check that out. But this two gamer is just going to be all Arsenal. Uh, look at the odds here. 87% chance to win. And then the other match is pretty even. You got 1.5 basically for both teams implied goal total between Brentford and Brighton. You also have the Luton Town injury situation. So that that's going to take away even any consideration for playing those guys. And all their guys aren't even aren't even cheap if you look at it. Um, like Alfie Dowdy, I, I guess I guess Carlton Morris is 5K, but Dowdy is 6,700. Barkley 5,800. You're not really going to be looking at those guys. So it's going to be full on Arsenal and then throw in Bright, Brentford, Brighton players kind of a thing. That's that's going to be the majority of the lineups. If you're playing cash games, you're probably going to be fine in six Arsenal players and then plugging in. We'll see if Evan Ferguson gets to start for Brighton. That'll be a cheap piece from one of these other matches. Um, my initial build was just, uh, play the, play the big, big, play the big names for Arsenal and then go down in defender and fit and then just plug in whoever fits. And then at goalkeeper, uh, fading Raya, fading Kaminsky and playing the mid range, uh, goalkeeper. The one reason I'm, I'm not going to play Kaminsky is one Arsenal have, have killed me many times in terms of playing a goalkeeper against them because, uh, they are an efficient team, and they don't usually uh, have shots on target that don't go in. That's why they are the worst team to play against for goalkeepers. Um, you could, if you really wanted, you could play Kaminsky. Hope he gets five saves. Uh, he did this recently against Bournemouth, made five saves against Bournemouth, allowed four goals, two points. Um, I'd say the range of outcomes for Kaminsky, we're, we're probably looking at uh, negative six to maybe two points. So if you think that's good enough, uh, take that route. I'm not sure. You may have to get there. We'll see what these lineups look like. Uh, we should get those in a couple seconds here as we're going through uh, Brentford, Brighton, Arsenal, Luton Town. It should be coming here. We should be coming. I got my computer over here. We got we got 1.30 p.m. Eastern. So they should we should be getting some lineups here. Here we go. Looks like uh, they're all in. All right, so... This is what we got. Um, okay, I'll, I'll start. I'll start from the bottom here. So we got Anya Dima is getting his this. I believe is his debut league start. He came off the bench last game for for Luton Town. Um, so that's obviously going to be something we have to take into account. Reese Burke is out, so that means this is what we're getting here. Let me. I'm actually. I'm not going to be very quick at this. I'm going to pull up Anya Dima's profile here. Um, he was on loan at Rotherham earlier this season and basically a winger. He played in an attacking role for Rotherham, uh, also played as a right back. So Kabore, we said this a few weeks ago, Kabore center back, but it seems like Kabore is going to be center back here for Lewintown. That's what the graphic is also, is also saying. So we got Anya Dima. He was playing for Rotherham first half of the season. Kabore center back, Mengi center back, Hashioka center back out of necessity. Dowdy is healthy enough to start and Ponzu is in there next to Barkley. And then the front three, we have Jordan Clark starting next to Sanders Townsend and then Jordan Morris, uh, not Jordan Morris, Carlton Morris. Uh, <laughs> Carlton Morris starting up front for the town. So I guess the changes here is mainly Anya Dima getting his debut league start for Luton Town, which is pretty uh, pretty interesting. I mean, he, Anya Dima wasn't even making the bench after getting recalled to Luton Town. Uh, and then he came off the bench, played 16 minutes against Tottenham in that last game. Um, so that is very interesting uh, in this spot. So he's basically going to be going against, what is that, Reese Nelson, uh, as we look at the lineups. Looks like Saka is Saka's not even in the squad. So... Uh, Arteta, either Arteta's lying or he just wants to give Saka some rest. So that is that is the one surprise here uh, as we look through his Arsenal lineup. Nothing really changes on the back line. We do get Zinchenko in at left back for Arsenal. Thomas Party is, okay, there's a bunch of changes. I shouldn't say nothing much has changed here. Uh, so the midfield is also changed. So this is going to open up some cheaper players for Arsenal as, as we're playing on DK. Um, as we look at all these guys, Emil Smith Rowe is 4,600, Thomas Party 3,600. So Declan Rice is out, Jorginho is out. So those are the two midfielders Party's in for. 
um, Smith Rowe. Smith Rowe, I believe he started a league game already this season. Um, if not, it was FA Cup or some kind of cup match. The front, the attack, Martinelli's still not healthy enough to start, which is kind of surprising. But we got Reese Nelson. Um, it seems like, what are they going to do here? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to get. I guess, okay, Reese Nelson on the right wing. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. They're going to do, they're going to rotate a little bit here. Um, but Reese Nelson on the right wing, we'll just say Trosar in the left wing, and then Havertz in the middle as that false nine that he's been playing a little bit. So, uh, a bit of rotation. So, as a reminder, we have we have uh, Doughty and Barkley and then set pieces for Luton Town. Set pieces for Arsenal are a little different here. So, we're going to get Trossard on the left side. And the right side, we're going to get, I don't know. I don't know who we're going to get. Um, let's actually, let's see who we're going to get. Let's determine this. I guess we're going to get Odegaard. I guess we still get – so Declan Rice had been taking some. So we'll probably get Trossard. Um, I don't know if Reese Nelson would take over Odegaard, but I guess he's in play here. So I'd say we're getting Reese Nelson uh, – sorry, I'd say we're getting Trossard and Odegaard on set pieces, uh, probably direct free kicks at a minimum with Odegaard in there. And what's going on here? My screen is not clicking. All right, there we go. And maybe Reese Nelson might come in for a set piece or two. We'll see. We'll see how this match goes. I think the, the amount of minutes these guys are going to get is going to depend on how long these guys go. Of note, Emil Smith Rowe actually does did take a cross at one point. I'm looking at his game looks. He did start a league match. He went 71 minutes here. Uh, Wait, eh, okay. he has two starts. I guess that's a little surprising. He had this massive match. He started both matches. Okay, Sheffield United, Nottingham Forest. Now he's going against Luton Town. Uh, 70 minutes in both of those. So mm, probably a guy like Smith Rowe. This is, I think this is the first start of the season for Party, uh, or at least since the beginning of the season uh, for Party. So you do have minutes concerns, though, you know, if, they, if they're up 3-0 kind of thing, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter in the end. So let's get in this other match here. We have Brighton. Uh, Brighton are a little more difficult to look at because they don't list by uh, formation. Um, I'm actually going to wait a little bit, see the one that gets up on our cheat sheet. Um, Brentford lineup. Uh, we still don't get Brian Bomo, Brian Bomo in the starting 11, despite that being rumor. Not a rumor. Actually, Thomas Frank said that. So uh, nothing changes. Stegione is back from suspension, but he's on the bench. We still have the same back five. It's the same 5-3-2 for Brentford. Rear Slav on the wing, Lewis Potter on the wing, Matthias Jensen in the midfield, and Yarmul Lajic get another start in the midfield with Janel. Uh, so Jensen on the set pieces, Tony also pitching in on free kicks. He's next to Johan Visa. So this is the same lineup that they used uh, home against Manchester United where they, they racked up 30 shots. Probably not going to happen again, but... Nevertheless, they got the same lineup with you got Anyeka coming off the bench and Bomo coming off the bench, Reggie Young coming off the bench for Lewis Potter, uh, Damsgaard option, Godos an option, Maupain option, a lot of options that Brentford can use. I assume they're going to use all five subs here. Um, as for Arsenal, again, all these guys can be subbed on because uh, all the regulars are basically on the bench. Probably going to get Tomiyasu in for, we could get Tomiyasu in for Ben White actually, depending on how this match goes. Uh, as for the Luton Town bench, um, it's not a ton. It's not a ton. Chong is healthy enough here. So Woodrow probably come off the bench. Uh, Chong coming off the bench. Probably Townsend and Clark will be the guys. Joe Johnson may come on for Hashioka. Back. Not that that matters too much, but not a ton on the bench. They're so beat up. Let's get into this Brighton lineup. It's uh, a little difficult to read. So let's, let's figure this out. Uh, okay. I, I kind of. I kind of thought this was, we were going to get Igor at some kind of left back girl. So we don't have a stupid yet in. So we got to figure out who's in. We got Lewis Dunk and Van Heck at center back. Uh, we have Igor. We'll just say it how it is here. Igor at left back. Joel Veltman at right back. We got Pascal Gross. We'll call, I'll start with the 4 2 3 1 here. So Pascal Gross, Baleba as the defensive midfielders. Adam Alano, who's probably going to go 45 minutes as the attacking midfielder here. And then on the right wing, we got Adingra. On the left wing, we got Buenanote. And at forward, holy cow, Joel Pedro is starting. Uh, 
Yeah, so Pedro is immediately back in the starting 11 following a hamstring injury. So Lamptey an option from the bench and CISO an option from the bench. Motor, Welbeck, Stupignan, all those guys probably going to come in at some point. So Jao Pedro back from a hamstring injury. He's probably not going to be ready for 90. So we're looking at probably, I don't know, 70 minutes from Jao Pedro. Maybe he's 100%, who knows, but it is off a hamstring injury. He has been out for about a month and Welbeck has been the guy. Looks like Evan Ferguson is even in the squad, so that is kind of surprising there. So Welbeck will probably come on for Joe Pedro. Adam Lana is a guy who just starts and goes 45. So we could get uh we could get in CISO. Um we could even get Welbeck on for for uh for, for Lalana. May, maybe we could get Yaka Motor in for Lalana. I, I'd say in CISO on for Lalana. 45 to 65 minutes in. Bonanote will probably sub off as well. Uh, that's another option to come on for. And then, you know, if, if I don't know, Igor or something, if Supignan or Lamptey come on for, for one of these guys, Lamptey played on more of an attacking role in that last game. So he's an option to come on. Uh, and then you figure, yeah, I already mentioned Pedro there. So, so that, there we go. That's kind of the lineups. Uh, let me see if we got any questions here. No questions, but uh, we got a bunch of people listening. So that's that's it here. Um, any thoughts on these lineups? Let's let's see. Still waiting for these ones to come up on our cheat sheet. So yeah, this uh, this Arsenal one. This lineup is kind of interesting. I would say I don't think it really matters in terms of. I'd be surprised if the odds change at all here for Arsenal. I mean, we still got still you know world class players. Playing for them, we have we did see you know the prior starts for Emil Smith Rowe uh, when it was against Nottingham Forest and uh, Sheffield United. Arsenal had no problems you know scoring that kind of thing. Uh, so let's look at the prices for some of these Arsenal guys. Well, let me refresh my DraftKings here and let's get the starters in. So Emil Smith Rowe is the so there's two forwards. Uh, Reese Nelson is 9,800. All right, good luck playing him. Um, <laughs> uh, ultimate GPP move is, is playing Reese Nelson and getting a brace, but he's 9,800, which I think is more expensive than Saka was, or about the same price as Saka. Haberts is 7,600. We'll see if he's going to go. He's basically been going 90 in all these matches, but again, short week against Luton Town. They got Champions League coming up as well. Uh, so not the easiest click we could get. He could be one of the first subs for Kai Havertz. Uh, Odegaard's 85, Trossard is 83, Smithrow, party. Smithrow, very interesting at 46. Uh, we saw what he did at Sheffield United game. Uh, 10 points, got the assist. 2.8 points at Nottingham Forest. Not as good, but 4,600 for, for Arsenal. Thomas, party. Uh, you know, when he was playing earlier in the season, it was basically at right back for Ben White. So I can't really, you can't even really look at those numbers. 36, but 3,600 as a massive favorite. That's also in play. And then we have the defenders in Chenko is 5,300. Uh, so not a terrible option either. Um, probably going to fade everyone on Luton Town. Then whatever you want to do basically with... Uh, with Brighton Brentford, unfortunately, we don't get Evan Ferguson, so we we have a bunch of expensive players. Do you want to spend on Pascal Gross when uh, you're spending Arsenal? That's kind of decision you have to make here. Brentford are slight favorites here. Pascal Gross is 800 more than Ivan Tony. Joe Pedro, the the uh, sub risk 8400. Lewis Potter, another sub risk 7200. A lot of these guys are pretty expensive here when you got Arsenal. Uh, you only got a bunch of cheaper Arsenal players. Not going to play Lalana, 45 minutes, basically. Uh, Bonanote, 4,800, 4, and he is, what, 60, 70 minutes in range four. So you got a lot of uh, – this is really an ugly slate here, uh, unfortunately. Um, you do have Igor here at 2,600 if you want a cheap full – if you want a cheap fullback slash possible center back, depending how they line up here. You got the center back for Brentford as well. So the prices aren't friendly. You play a bunch of Arsenal guys. Uh, de decide if you're going to want to spend on Brentford or Brighton players. Uh, it's kind of the same situation for this Manchester City match. I'll, I'll pull that one up here really quickly before I go. Uh, before I get on to the company meeting here. But 
So this is what we got for Manchester City. Our Aston Villa are so they don't they don't have Ali Watkins, they don't have John McGinn, they don't have Matty Cash, they still don't have Kamara. Jacob Ramsey is still out. So you got this difficult spot. This is basically, I mean, similar to basically every Manchester City showdown. This is like a five to one build. I know Man City had two shots in the last time these teams played. Aston Villa one to one nil. This is probably a good spot to to go Emmy Martinez. Um Depending on his price here, I mean, you could get – where is Emmy Martinez? Captain 6,600. So, Emmy Martinez is – realistically, you could captain Emmy Martinez, go for go for eight saves, one goal allowed, and have five Man City players uh, in your lineup. Um, otherwise, I guess Rico Lewis, if he starts here, he came off the bench for the injured Nathan Ake in that last game. So, Rico Lewis is almost min pricing here. Uh, he's one of the cheaper players for for Man City. Kovacic down here, Ruben Diaz, Akanji. So really, you could also captain any of those guys, and then just get up to get up to all the all the big names. Uh, maybe be to be different in tournaments. Of course, you're going to fade Erling Holland, um, and hope he continues his form of what he's kind of been doing recently. Uh, we'll see what the rotation looks like with those lineups. So we still got half an hour for that game. Um, I think that's all I got here. But so thank you for watching this. Again, reminder: check out the Discord, rotoware.com slash soccer trial to get in there. Uh, hopefully, I answered all of the lineup questions on this show, though. Um, yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck in the slate. Good luck betting. Whatever. I'm probably gonna look at. It's pretty. Uh, seems like a good spot for Arsenal. It's just a. Uh, pile on goals and if they struggle to score goals is a good spot for them to pile on corners i'll probably be on a manchester city corner bet as well uh, against aston villa uh, as for this brentford brighton match it's a little tougher i'm not sure if i'm ready to go brentford corners brighton a little different team than manchester united who they just played so uh, that will be interesting to look at but that's all i got for this one any questions hit us up in the discord rotowire.com slash chat Find me on Twitter at RotoZDroik or at Roto Warrior Soccer. Thank you for watching this, everyone. Uh, good luck betting. Good luck on uh, your drafting slates. We have we'll have more D, we'll have more betting content throughout the week. We'll have more DFS content throughout the week. So check out RotoWire.com/soccer.